Hey there, welcome to Detectability. I'm Barrage. Got an iPhone 5S for T-Mobile. So I just picked this up literally. Hey, I went through hell and high water to get this and the first thing I do when I get home is I do a review. Because why not, right? So we got the iPhone 5S here. It's for T-Mobile. Again, LT compatible with T-Mobile's network. Now I initially wanted to get the gold one, but unfortunately they only had about mm, five gold iPhone 5S is in stock, literally, and that's for every uh, major U.S. carrier, Verizon, T-Mobile, Sprint, and AT&T. In fact, they had none for T-Mobile. So they had a few 64 gigabyte versions, they had no 32s or 16s, and I think the first like four people were able to get it. So it's unfortunate because there were 350 people in line, and you know, luckily we were like the number five in line, and the thing is, is that a lot of people were clamoring to get that gold one, weren't able to get it, oh well, got the white because I already have a black iPhone 5. Figures, let's go with the white one this time. So you can see the Apple logo. You got the front, obviously minimal iOS 7, iPhone 5S, iPhone 5S, Apple logo. Let's go ahead and open the box. There you see the device, obviously. Put the device to the side. Let's go ahead and just remove this right here, show you guys what's in there in the contents. You got the ear pods, uh, the wall charger, and of course the lightning cable. All right, so that's what's inside the box. Let's go ahead and take a look at the handset here. Obviously, you have the plastic, which I'm going to just remove right there as such. Okay, you can see the front. you got the touch ID sensor. All right, you got the bottom of the device, which has the dual speakers, the lightning port, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. you got the SIM card slot, volume rockers plus the vibrate mode, and then the power button, and then the back of the device. Now, the gold one has gold trimming, gold trimming on the sides, a little gold ring right there around the touch ID sensor, or the button, which, mind you, you could actually still push the button. I know a lot of people were wondering if you could push the button. You could. So you do still have the option to push the button. Now before we get into anything, I'm going to show you guys how to set up the Touch ID sensor. So if you go to Settings and you go to Passcode and Fingerprint. All right, so you're going to want to enter your passcode, which I'll go ahead and do right here. All right, now the first thing you're going to want to do is go to Fingerprints. It says Add a Fingerprint. Okay, so just click on Add a Fingerprint. You see right here? It says just basically keep putting your fingerprint right here. Alright, it's basically, uh, it says lift and rest your finger on the home button repeatedly. It's comprehensively getting your fingerprint. Okay. There you go. That says adjust your grip. Okay. Oops. And you gotta just keep doing this until it really, really gets it in as much detail as possible. Okay, continue. And that's it. You got your fingerprint now. It's active, and you also have to have a passcode. Okay, so now that that's set up, I'm gonna go home here. Click on the power button. And now you can see if I put the wrong finger, it says try again. If I put the right finger, it unlocks it. Very simple, right? So another area where the fingerprint uh, Touch ID sensor comes in handy is when you're in the App Store. It asks, asks you for your password. You could actually just push the Touch ID sensor, and it works that way instead. So again, just to emphasize this. It's not gonna work with that finger. It will work with my thumb. So just wanted to disclose that for you guys in case you're wondering about the App Store. Okay, so here's the messaging app. Pretty simple, pretty comprehensive. Or you could just go ahead and type. Oops. Or of course, you can always just, hey, how are you today? What's going on? Do you want to hang out? All right, pretty quick, right? Because T-Mobile LT, even though it's one bar. And of course, you also have the gesture base. You can gesture back. And again, that's consistent across the board throughout the OS. All right, so we can just go ahead and click home. Right, let's look at the calendar. Clearly, the calendar is the same as what you're going to get with any iteration of iOS 7, a very minimal calendar. You can add events. Uh, you can just click on calendars and add various calendars. You got today. You got inbox. It, it syncs with your mail. Uh, you can obviously go to th through different dates. You can look at it via a uh, month as opposed to per day. So the calendar very comprehensive, very minimal. Obviously the photo gallery, so you can just take a picture and pinch in and play around with it. If you just take the picture, you can edit the picture um, by clicking the little edit button right here. So you actually have various different editing options, auto enhance, you have various different filters here. All right, so let's go ahead and cancel that. You have a red eye crop. All right, let's cancel. And you can see how you can share it here as well. Just click on the picture and you can share it with various different mediums. You can do multiple pictures at once, of course. And you got Flickr, Facebook, etc. You can set it as wallpaper, assign the contact. You got AirDrop, um, print, use wallpaper, etc. So uh, you, you don't get third party sync here, but for the most part, it's still very functional in terms of what they give you. I mean, they're assuming that you're going to obviously upload a lot of these pictures to Facebook or Twitter. So um, it's still very functional, fast, especially if you have a really good network. So uh, that's solid in terms of 
sharing. And you can see Spotlight, it's just faster on this device than it is on the iPhone 5. All right, so I will say that Spotlight is a little bit faster, not a little bit actually, it's a lot faster. Because again, to go through the specs here, you got an A7 processor with a 64-bit, uh, it's an eight, excuse me, A7 64-bit processor. Uh, you got a 8-megapixel camera, same retina display, which is 1136 by 640, rendering 326 pixels per inch. Touch sensor ID. You got the new flash, of course. So, uh, you know, enough new features for an S model, I suppose. Other people may think otherwise, and that's fine. But for the most part, for an S model, it's perfectly fine. And you can see the tabs here. You got gesture base. You can just gesture through the tabs. You can obviously set up different widgets, as I like to call them, in the notification center. You got the control center, which isn't customizable. You get what they give you here. Again, an iOS 7 feature. You got brightness and whatnot, so that's there as well. All right, now, before I get into the camera and all the other apps, let's go to settings and show you guys a few things here. So, again, you could swipe back. You could swipe back, gesture based. All right, now, if you were to go to the notification center, you get various notification center settings. You want to disable, like, the stocks or the weather or whatnot. You have the ability to do that, so it's there. Okay, so I can go back. And you got control center settings, obviously. You can access it on lock screen, etc. All right, now if you go to general here and you go to Siri, you can see obviously there's a male Siri. So voice, gender, female, male. So we'll leave it at uh, female for now. Uh, you got accessibility, auto lock, and of course we went to the passcode and fingerprint. And you can enter your passcode and then edit those settings. So let's cancel that, go back. And the sounds have changed. So if I was to go to, let's say, text tone, and I don't know, we have it set a tritone, don't we? So where is classic? There is classic. Okay, so try it down. All right, this sounds a little bit more digital, I suppose. And again, gesture base. You get really used to that gesture base system, uh, which is just really nice. It's a nice little addition there uh, in terms of changing the sounds and whatnot. And obviously, you can see the little wallpaper is a um, dynamic wallpaper, which they also like to call live wallpaper. By the way, you can also push the button. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I'll mention it again. Um, so there are dynamic wallpapers, and if you've updated to the latest version of iOS 7, you'll see that they've changed the still wallpapers as well. So they've added various different still wallpapers. You can see you could just add whatever you'd like. And if you add a brighter wallpaper, like a really light wallpaper, the text will turn black. So that's a cool little feature there. Go back here, gesture back. You can see the red, <laughs> which is really interesting in my opinion. you got the red thing going on. Hey, why not, right? Some people like red. Can't discriminate against red. All right, you got yellow, you got green, you got purple. Let's go ahead and just, actually, you know what? Let's do this color right here. Purple, that's what it is. All right, so there you see the live wallpaper, dynamic wallpaper, again, as they like to call it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the camera, because I know you guys are wondering what the camera's like. Of course, that's important. So let's take a look at the camera here. All right, now, one of the really cool things about this camera is that if you hold down the shutter, look how many pictures it takes while I'm holding it down. Amazing, right? I just took 60 pictures. I just took 60 pictures. It's like a machine gun. Alright, and then obviously you got the various different filters here. Alright, so if I go back, you got square, you got panorama, you got video, which if you start recording a video, you could take a picture while you're recording the video. You could zoom into the video, which is a really, really cool feature. Obviously, you can stop the video and then. Go to slow-mo, which is the new feature here that's 120 frames per second. So I'm currently recording in slow motion. You can see how smooth that looks when you're just rotating the camera around. You can zoom in, zoom out, take a picture as you're recording. All right, let's go ahead and stop that. And let's actually play it, see what it looks like, right? I'm currently recording in slow motion. Oh, slow motion. Yeah, see, it's, I mean, it doesn't sound like that, but you can see it's a slow motion feature. All right, I can just basically pan through my various different pictures, pinch out. It's going to take me back to my gallery. So the camera has added a lot of, I mean, the camera quality in general, which I'll do a video, separate video just on camera quality, has quite improved. I mean, it's really nice. And you can always still take pictures like that, but you can always just do that, which is fantastic, because you can take like a million pictures at once. All right, and of course, you got the flash, which is really bright. Now, and you know, it's broad daylight, so I can't really take a picture of, uh, a bright picture here with the flash. But the flash, let me just go ahead and turn it on here. Is really bright. Or at least it's bright enough, right? That's all that matters. I mean, again, like I said, it's broad daylight, so you can see the quality. Even on a picture like this, the quality comes out really good. All right, so the camera is good. And again, I'll do a video emphasizing on just the camera. Okay, and you can see obviously there's the front facing camera, you got HDR features, 
right? So you can see the front-facing camera. Let's go back to the rear. And everything is fast. Entering an app, exiting an app, everything's pretty responsive and fast, so I do appreciate that. And you can see the weather app. you got Cupertino right there, Glendale right here, which is my city. Cupertino, okay, so that's where Apple's located, obviously. you got the clock app, so very simplistic clock app, alarm, mode, clock, uh, timer, stopwatch. You guys know about that. Maps, nothing changes on the maps end either, either. All right, so you can see pinch zoom maps, etc. Exit out of that. All right, you got notes, you got reminders. So all the regular iOS 7 apps that you're going to get are here. All right, let's go ahead and just try Siri. Hi, Siri. Hi there. Turn on Bluetooth. Okay, I turned on Bluetooth. Tell me the weather. The weather's looking good between today and Wednesday. Increase brightness. I made it a bit brighter. Decrease brightness. Okay, I made the screen. Set reminder, tomorrow 6 p.m. need to buy a case. Here's your reminder for tomorrow at 6 p.m. What do you think about Google Now? Here's your reminder for tomorrow at 10 do you like Google now? Here's your reminder for tomorrow. Oh my god. Okay then. Do you like Google now? If it's all the same to you, I'd rather Google later. <laughs> Are you better than Google now? I don't really have anything to say about Google now. Really? Or ever. Alright. Thank you, Siri. Just doing my job. Fast, responsive, immediate, literally improved uh, tenfold over previous iterations of the iPhone. That includes the iPhone 5 as that spotlight. You can see everything is just, again, a little bit smoother in its operation. And that's something that, you know, it's definitely a nice little added touch. And obviously, you got Google Search, which is a third party app. All right, so you can see Google Now. You could set that up. Let's just go ahead and run Google Now here on the iPhone 5S. All right. Oh, you got to sign in, don't you? Tell me the weather. All right, maybe you don't. It's 66 degrees with haze in Glendale. All right, so Google Now works perfectly fine. Third-party apps in general work perfectly fine. Um, if you go to Messages, again, you can see there's Gesture Base, right? So now the thing about the Gesture Base is that it's consistent across the board. And one thing that with earlier beta builds of iOS that they didn't allow is the ability to bring up Control Center in the Messages. With the first original betas you couldn't do that. Now you can actually do that in the messages which is really cool. And the notification center. And one of the things I wanted to emphasize was that you can access both anywhere, literally. If you're a third party app, if you're in Safari, uh, if you're in a game, you're in an app, whatnot, you can access the control center and the notification center which is nice. And you can see obviously here the various different tabs with Safari. And you could just swipe them away. And um, the gestures also work here on Safari so I could swipe forward to get to like a website that I was at. Uh, or you can go back, obviously, to gesture back to another website. You can see there's also reader mode right here. So reader mode, really convenient. You know, I like reader mode. And I could just go back here, gesture back, gesture back, gesture back, go home. So it's a nice little added touch. The whole gesture-based system is consistent across the board, and it's something that's just again a really nice touch. All right, you can see obviously the dialer music, which I don't have any songs. All right, let's go ahead and look at the calculator here. See how quick everything opens and everything closes voice memos for example right quick FaceTime super quick battery life seems to be solid thus far I haven't charged one since I bought it and it's you know obviously it's down but it's not that bad it seems to be running perfectly fine Photogene which is a third-party photo editing app see how that runs oh, don't allow quick loads immediately close that load up a picture edit it you're good to go Temple Run Oz see how fast this loads That was pretty fast. And again, you can access the control center. You can access the notification center, and you can just exit out. And then you want to multitask, obviously. You just double click, 
you get the multitasking which you could just kind of get away close out of everything swipe down nothing happens and you can see it right there T-Mobile LTE so in case you're wondering it is T-Mobile LTE and really other than that I mean that's what I wanted to emphasize on that because I've done so many iOS 7 videos but in general just in terms of the 5S and people asking is it worth it should I upgrade over my 5 you know I don't know I'll leave that up to you guys uh, I do think it's a pretty fast pretty nice system it's got a few minor improvements series obviously a little bit better a little bit faster a little bit more comprehensive in her her and his responses but is it enough to warrant an upgrade it depends if you're coming from a 4S yeah uh, if you have a 5 right now I don't know you know I mean again uh, that's really up to you I mean it depends on a lot of different factors uh, this is not a cheap phone so take into consideration that it's a premium priced phone and you're going to be paying premium prices for it so uh, I'll leave that up to you guys I wanted to buy it obviously to do a few reviews a few comparisons which I will be doing with various different phones so look out for that on the channel of course also don't forget to subscribe to Technability and check out www.technability.com I am Barrage this is the iPhone 5S for T-Mobile LTE thank you guys for watching have a good one